this is Lifestyle by D and today I'm going to show you how you can do this super cute TikTok look. It is fun, it is glittery and it's perfect for date night outs with your friends or your partners. So, go! So the key to a long-lasting makeup that stays fresh throughout the day is to make sure that your skincare prep is done well. So for me, I'm going to start with the Retinol Sika Repair Ampule. This is a newly launched product from Innisfree and what I like about it is that it helps to soothe skin redness but because it's a mild product, it's not very um, irritating for your skin. It is really good for sensitive skin as well. So after using retinol, you want to make sure that you're moisturizing your skin well. And I'm using the Bija Sika Balm EX from Innisfree. So putting on moisturizer before your makeup is really important because this is what's going to help to hold on to the foundation without making it look cakey or dry. So my last step to my skincare prep is to actually prep my own lips. So I'm using the Innisfree Lip Balm here. It is a gorgeous colour. So now that my skin's all prepped, I'm going to move into colour correcting before I get to my foundation. And how I'm going to do that is by using a concealer. I'm using my concealer from Innisfree right now. And you just want to look for a shade that is either the same as your skin tone or one shade darker. And you're going to put this in any areas that you want extra coverage. So for example, for me, that would be my acne scars, my under eye bags. I've got some greyness and redness here. And around my nose. A little bit around my lips. So what you want to do is start on the outside and blend out the edges first. And try not to touch so much of the product so that it's actually going to cover what you want it to cover. Okay, so this is how my skin looks like after it's colour corrected. Now we're going to even out the skin tone using foundation. For today, I'm using the No Sebum Powder Cushion from Innisfree. One thing I love about cushion foundations is that they are so convenient. You can bring them in your makeup bag for a quick touch up. So the Cushion Foundation comes with 5 different shades and I'm going to go with this one. So the Cushion has been tested to last up to 48 hours in terms of coverage. And the best part is, this formulation is actually transfer proof. So when you're going around like areas that you've went through with the colour correcting just now, you just want to make sure that you're not pressing in too hard so that you're not moving any of the products. So actually this cushion foundation formulation is perfect for this period of time where we're all wearing face masks because it actually helps to control for skin oiliness and that makes it transfer proof. So another thing that I like about this cushion foundation is actually the applicator itself. So this is their new applicator and it is divided into two textures. So the top part is actually an air hole and then the second one is the cushion. So what this does is that when you're applying it, it provides a more smooth application without clumping. I have really been into more natural looks lately. So in order to achieve that, I've been using more natural blushes like this one. And I've been using liquid blushes to help give that natural flush from within kind of vibes. So for my blush, I just like to add it a little bit on my nose to kind of give that more natural diffused effect. So now that I have all my liquid products on my face and it's already taken some time to set, I'm going to lock everything in with a powder and I'm using the No Sebum Mineral Powder from Innisfree. Just like all your other products, you want to make sure you're dabbing the powder onto your skin. And do this very, very gently because you don't want to rub off any of the coverage you've already put on your face. Another pro tip for you, if you have a lot of smile lines over here, what you're going to do is blow a bubble and just gently dab it there. This is going to help prevent creases, especially if you're going to have your makeup on throughout the day.
Okay, so now that we're done with the base, we're gonna go into the eye makeup and today I'm feeling a little bit more on the orangey side, so let's do that. So the first shadow I'm gonna use is what we call a transition shade. So this transition shade should be like a base of the kind of colour you want. So for example, since I'm going with something orangey, I'm using this warm tone, very almost pastel-like orange to just kind of diffuse the colour when it's like on my lid and also the colour that I'm going to use at the end here which is going to be darker. So for the transition shade, you just want to start on the outer corners. You can be a bit more loose with your um, hand movement here. You can definitely just put the product all over your lids and closer to your brow. But what you want to make sure is that you're always starting at the corner of your eye over here and then bringing the product up. So the end effect, the outside part of your lid should have a more diffused look whereas the inside part here is a little bit more intense. If you do get any fallout like this, what you want to do is just take a face brush and lightly brush it off. And if you feel like there's still a line between your brow and your lids, what you're going to do is take a clean brush and gently blend out the edges. So for the transition shade, I also like to put it on my under eye but very very close to my waterline. This helps to make sure that the eye look looks more seamless and not like cut off because the top part has a lot of colour and then the bottom part is a little bit plain. Okay, so now I'm going to go with a slightly darker shade to create some depth at the end. But since we are going for a vibrant eye look, I'm going to keep the darker tone still very vibrant and very fresh. For example, this orangey tone that I'm layering on, it complements the transition shade and gives almost like that sunset vibe that we want to get with this look. So, I'm going to be using this gorgeous orange glitter from the My Color palette. It's so pretty and I feel like the glitter would really complement the warm oranges that we have right now. So, usually for glitters, I still prefer using my fingers because it doesn't hold on to the glitter so much and it actually puts it on my eyelids. Like, look at that. That is so pretty. Oh, I like this makeup look. It looks so pretty. So this is already super glittery, but if you want to have the extra oomph to the look, what you're going to do is get yourself a liquid glitter like this and just go in the inner corners of your eyelids at the waterline and then drag it up just a little bit to the eyelid. Okay, so now that we're done with the eyeshadow, we're going to finish up the look with an eyeliner and we're going to add the mascara later. Okay, so for my eyeliner, I always just start from the bottom lid and then I extend it outwards and then I connect the top part to my upper lid. So it creates like a triangle of sorts. And another thing I would suggest for those of you with hooded lids, do not extend it all the way in. Instead, just pull it until maybe mid part of your upper eyelid. And if you want to get that really nice cat liner, what you're going to do is go into your inner corners and create a small triangle. So now that we're done with the eyeliner, we're going to wrap up the whole look with the Simple Label Mascara from Innisfree and I'm using the Volume & Curl version. So if you're blessed with really nice brows, what you're going to do is take your mascara, wipe off all these excess from the wand and gently just brush it through your brows. You don't want a lot of product to go there. Basically, you just want very little to help keep your brow shape in place throughout the day and create this really nice definition we see here. Now that we're done with the eyes, I'm not going to go very heavy on the face makeup because we already have a little bit of blush hair and the eye itself is such a statement look in itself. We're just going to keep it very simple. I'm going to add a bit of highlighter just at the tops of my cheekbones. And of course, if you want to make a super statement glittery look, the best way to do it is to always add glitter at the tip of your nose. I just go back and forth really, really fast so that all the glitter is deposited there. So let's say you're going to go out at night and you just want to have a really fun look on, something very adventurous. What you can do is add a little bit of your liquid glitter on the middle of your nose. 
I know this looks crazy right now, but just trust the process. Take your finger and gently dab to distribute the glitter. It creates this gorgeous, gorgeous style that I personally like on these out with my friends. It's a fun look and I promise you it looks so good on the gram. And just to balance it out because this is really heavy, you want to add a little bit on the tip of your nose as well and do the same thing where you just blend it up. So we're already on our last step and I'm going to be using the Innisfree Airy Matte on my lips. So once we're done with this base colour, I'm just going to go in with this more deeper pink and go right at the edges of my lips. And for the finishing touches, I'm just going to add a little bit of gloss right at the center of my lips. Okay guys, so this is the finished makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I hope you guys will try out this makeup look yourselves using the No Sebum Powder Cushion. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and watch our YouTube channel. Bye!